this video, we're going to discuss the collapsing floor behavior. So this should be a pretty quick video. It's a short demonstration, and then I'll explain the, the behavior and the setup. But here we can see I've, I've designed a little uh, mysterious looking cave, all kinds of glowing crystal lying around. And we're just going to step through the cave here and around the corner. And then we fall through to the, the lower level and that's the demonstration okay so let's take a look and see how that's done so a couple things the inch the uh, cave itself isn't really meant I'm not meant to go beyond this point right so you can see I didn't go any further when it came to deco as I expected to fall through the, the floor um, I've got the trigger zone set up here really just for the sound effect so when I stepped onto, um, there we go. <laughs> when I stepped onto the uh, the area that triggered the sound, and that's really the only reason this, the trigger zone's there. Uh, we have the floor tile itself that has the behavior. I want to start with the general settings. We have the static mode, which is physics on, affected by gravity. Collision shape is box. Uh, is a mobile is set to no and always active. Then you have the behavior itself, collapsing floor. So uh, the first thing we have is the prompt text. Now you may not need or want a prompt text. It kind of depends on the scenario. Um, I just left it as default for now because it was good enough. We have the collapsing type. So we have fading and collapsing. So what's the difference? Well, if I had looked down and looked at the tile when I stepped on it, you uh, you would see that the, the tile would just fade away and disappear. Now collapsing, if I were to choose that, what it would do is it would just fall straight down and stay visible and land where you land uh, in the next level. So it would still be there. In my case, since I'm using essentially a dirt floor, I kind of figured it would make more sense if it just faded away and disappeared. Uh, the activate time or the active time is uh, 500 milliseconds. So again, I think this just varies depending on what you're going for. If you want a trap that a player can escape, you're going to want to provide enough time to understand what's happening, read the text, and move away. Half uh, half a second is probably not long enough, but in my case, I wanted it to fall through quickly so that you know we'd get through the demonstration and I wouldn't have to just stand there and wait for it to fall. So I, did, I set it down to half a, half a second or 500 milliseconds. You do what's best for your scene. The active range is just how close you have to be before it activates. Obviously I wanted to step right on it, so it didn't really matter in my case. But I could see where if you use the collapse type as collapsing, and the active range is a little bit broader way, you could set up something like, uh, let's suppose you wanted a boss fight and all of the tiles around the area where you're gonna have this boss fight, uh, wanna, you, know, you want those to collapse away so it restricts the play area. That would be a good use case for doing something like that instead. Uh, let's see here, we have the damage type. This has to do with the fall. So. In my case, I was only falling 100 units, which is about one floor. I don't, I don't know how, uh, how far I'd have to fall in order to take fall damage. So if you want it to be um, based on the fall damage set for your game, you would choose natural fall. And then, however, let's suppose we fell three stories. Uh, obviously, I'm going to take damage then, and it would just be whatever damage is allocated based on that fall. Um, if you do fixed fall, that just basically means you're going to die. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter uh, how far you fall. And the reason for that is, let's suppose we had a, uh, a pit that was, you know, essentially endless, right? And we expect the player to die. We don't want them to have to fall, you know, five, 10, 100 stories in order to eventually hit the, the ground and die. You know, we could just cut to the chase and, and kill them off and move them on to the uh, uh, restart zone. So that, that would be a use case for fixed fall where it's just an instant death from that. The damage height really only applies to natural fall. So again, the units between floors is 100. So uh, the damage height is 
how far do I have to fall in order to start taking damage? So I wouldn't normally take damage after 100 units, um, so I just went ahead and lowered it down so I take some damage. Lastly, the collision scale. Let's imagine this yellow line represents 100 or 1. This would be 80%, right, or 0 0.80. It just scales down the collision, so there's no interference with the other uh, objects that also have uh, a collision box. If I clipped another tile, it could have a weird effect because of the gravity works in max. It could cause it to, to spin or do unpredictable things. So I wanted to scale that down a little bit so that it fell through smoothly. Okay. And then the only other thing I'll cover in this video, it's kind of a bonus, I guess, but uh, the lighting, you might, you, you might notice that I've done a lot of work with uh, the lighting. I've added all these little blue lights, but then beyond that, uh, there's a filter effect. So I kind of want to show that off since I could. So uh, let me show you what it looks like without the filter effect. So you can see the, the tiles are much more brown um, without that on. And I kind of wanted more mysterious look to it. So I was playing around with these filter effects and I came across uh, cool contrast. And I set that on and see, I, I just looked a lot better, I thought. So I went with that. So just in case you were wondering, I thought I'd cover that as well. Uh, but that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it or if you learned something new, uh, please be sure to click the like button below. It helps me out a lot. It makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like I'm doing a good job. So click that like button. If you're new here or if you haven't yet subscribed, now's a great time to do so. Go ahead and click the subscribe button while you're down there clicking the like button. And if you'd like a notification for when the next video posts, just click the bell icon. That'll uh, notify you when new videos come out. But that's it. Thanks so much for your time and watching all the way through. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.